So the much awaited, highly anticipated update for the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra series has just dropped. It has taken a ungodly amount of time, to be honest, for this first update to be announced. There's a whole host of camera improvements that it's supposed to bring, and there were lots of complaints that people had about the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra series, and of course the other devices in the S24 line, and some of those are specifically said to have been resolved with this update. So I found the official change list online. Now I believe this is a translation from Korean, uh, so hopefully it is still accurate, but I thought it would make an interesting video, and of course I went out and tested the camera specifically yesterday, uh, so we've had some kind of new photos taken with the updated version of the camera software. So first of all is brighter backlit shots. Say goodbye to washed out photos, high pixel mode now shines with better balance in brighter scenes. So of course this is going to be an adaptation for the 50 megapixel modes and on the S24 Ultra, the full 200 megapixel mode. I didn't notice specifically when I was shooting in backlit environments where I was kind of running into issues on the 200 megapixel, but of course we did test this. So it's kind of hard to quantify, to be honest, what type of backlit situations that Samsung is talking about. So I kind of just took a bunch of different shots in different lighting situations, as you can see. I do think overall, this is probably somewhat improved. I think this is kind of a general improvement. Uh, I absolutely love the look of this shot here, though, of course, that may well be down to the lighting of this particular scene. In the UK right now, we've had absolutely minimal sun, so I've not been able to test kind of like good sunsets or anything like that. And I do think this is one of those areas where this might shine because obviously it's talking about backlit situations. It's probably talking about the sun shining into frame. A hard one to pin down, but definitely the S24 Ultra is no slouch in these types of situations. Sharper text zooms, Ultra. So this is an improvement just for the S24 Ultra, but it says get closer than ever with crystal clear text, even at high magnifications. I actually don't love or use high zoom modes, particularly on the S24 Ultra, but I know that lots of people do. I did a very brief test here, and you can see that there are direct text improvements when you are zooming in on the S24 Ultra now. It definitely seems like this is like somewhat artificial, like Samsung almost looks like it's basically kind of like recreating this text. It's probably using some sort of predictive AI to be able to tell what the words are and then somewhat recreating that if your shot is blurry. You can kind of immediately see it. The text above here is blurry and the text below is able to kind of identify that and really crunch that and make it nice and vibrant. This isn't going to be an enormous deal for everyone, but for those times where you are zooming in and you need text to be legible, this is a good improvement. Indoor portrait enhancements. This again is an improvement specifically for the S24 Ultra. Brighter shadows, sharper faces, perfect indoor portraits every time. There's kind of a lot on this list that are kind of like just general improvements. On the one hand, this is great to see from Samsung that they are continually improving the software on their phones. But on the other hand, it's kind of a bit of a shame that the software was shipped in its current state if there was gonna be so much work done on it in a release when the phone's essentially been out for almost two months now. Throughout some portrait testing yesterday though, there does seem to be an improvement in portrait mode. As someone who doesn't use portrait mode an awful lot, I was actually thoroughly impressed yesterday when I did test the S24 Ultra's portrait performance. The cutouts are extremely, extremely good on this phone now, which is really nice to see. And also an important note is that the S24 is fast with it. Sometimes devices can take a long time to process these portrait mode images. You don't always get a representation very quickly of what your final image is going to look like. On the S24 Ultra, this was immediately very, very quick. And speaking of speed, if you're wanting the best in terms of chargers for your Galaxy S24 Ultra or really any other smartphone or laptop, look no further. This is the Nexode Pro series of chargers by Ugreen. They're a new series of fast charging bricks for all of your devices and they really pack a punch. First of all, the design is really slick. I love this kind of matte gray style soft touch plastic that they're using. They're smaller than their last generation of chargers and they're also much more heat efficient. So I've got two with me here. This is the smaller one of the two. This is a 65 watt fast charger. This is perfect for smartphones, for tablets, but it can actually also be used for laptops. In fact, this is going to charge a 16 inch MacBook Air 0% to 51% in just 30 minutes, which is insane for such a little brick. This one here is its bigger brother. This is the 160 watt Nexode Pro Ultra Fast Charger. It has four ports on the back to charge laptops or phones simultaneously. And this is going to charge a 16 inch MacBook Pro from 0% to 50% in just 27 minutes. Let me tell you, this is going to make things a lot easier when I travel. Yo guys, so I said this would be useful whilst I'm traveling and my goodness have these charges 
chargers prove useful whilst I'm traveling. This is the 65 watt version. You can see that it's plugged into my MacBook here. I'm charging the S24 Ultra uh, as we speak, all from this tiny little brick. And there's even a USB uh, A port at the bottom that I can charge an additional device from, all from this absolutely tiny little brick. They are so impressive and power efficient. If you're interested in checking out these brand new chargers from Ugreen, check the link in the description. And thank you to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Okay, so back to the improvements. Ultra smooth video on the S24 Ultra. Capture your moments with more stunning clarity and detail in rear video recording. Again, this is slightly more jargon from Samsung. Unfortunately, there's nothing kind of slightly more tangible about the improvements when it comes to video. It's hard to tell, to be honest, how much of an improvement there is. I did shoot some video last night just to kind of get the test. It was also a low light test in terms of video, which is generally where Android devices tend to perform worse against something like, for instance, the iPhone 15 Pro. The performance was good. I was overall impressed, but it's hard to say quite how much of an improvement there was over the last iteration of the device before uh, the update. Food mode fiesta, colors pop and flavors come alive with richer, more vibrant food photos. So food photos seemingly improved in the update. I'll let you guys be the judge. So if you don't know, the S24 Ultra has a food mode and I'm assuming that's where this update is kind of taking place. Uh, but the mode is actually really weird on the S24 Ultra. I am not a fan of this mode in any way, shape or form. It does this kind of weird halo blur effect around your food. And to be honest, I just don't think you need it like if you need some blur on your image go and shoot portrait mode it will kind of do a decent job cutting it out or just get nice and close to your food with the main rear facing sensor it's large enough now to get a decent amount of shallow depth of field in your images night mode magic experience improved saturation and white balance for more natural looking nighttime shots so this is a big claim here from samsung there were definitely concerns with night mode on the s24 ultra most notably for me it was kind of color blotching in the sky and i did put this one to the test. So we've got kind of a changing landscape of lighting here. So this was kind of obviously kind of dusky time. The sun had just started going, but there's still got a lot of color left in the sky. And then we will get to kind of almost like full night shots uh, a little bit down the line. Something to call out very early on is that there definitely is interesting color blotching when the light was going, but Samsung is almost trying to brighten the frames up here. You can kind of see this uh, in the skies in these images here. It does get very blotchy when you mix in some of the artificial light. The good news is though that this is drastically reduced later on when uh, almost like the sky is like a true black. Samsung definitely crushes this and eliminates the color blotching. It's particularly bad in this image here though. So I obviously had to whip out my iPhone 15 Pro also just to see how the iPhone handled that situation as well. So here's the iPhone shot and apart from the horrible light halos which the iPhone is of course famous for you can see that the color blotching is actually significantly better than on the Samsung. I will put these side by side so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about but the good news is that this is like I say dramatically reduced as soon as the sun dips beyond this sort of level. DNG gallery zoom explore your photos in even greater detail with improved image quality when zooming in in the expert pro raw app. All this one I believe and please if anyone knows better correct me in the comments but I think this is basically just saying within the gallery setting you weren't kind of able to get a full res zoom on your raw files so you would kind of snap a photo and then it would actually be kind of like a lower quality preview. I believe that has now been changed and you should get a higher quality preview inside the gallery itself. The actual raw file seemingly is untouched for now. Action heroes on the S24 Ultra capture fast moving subjects in backlit conditions with sharper focus and clearer details. Again, it's seemingly like Samsung is just basically responding to consumer feedback and uh, snapping fast moving photos has always been an issue. Again, it's good that Samsung are acknowledging this, but I think this is a deeper issue. And seemingly I didn't see too much improvement when I shot kind of the odd thing here or there with cars moving in the frame. The only thing I will say though, is the S24 Ultra is definitely much faster when it comes to kind of like shutter lag performance and general capture time than it has been for previous Samsung devices. Subject shine again on the S24 Ultra. Uh, people, flowers and more come into life with expo optimized exposure and color expression in photo mode. Again this is slightly gimmicky like I'm not totally sure how we test something like this because it's relatively subjective. Samsung aren't giving us a ton of data. The only thing that I would say is that the colors on the photos that I shot yesterday are looking 
looking really nice. Like everything is very balanced. I do keep scene optimizer on when I'm shooting with my Samsung devices because uh, I believe personally that's the best way you're going to be able to get the best out of Samsung's hardware is to use something which they've had on their phones and their cameras now for a good many years. I think overall, to be honest, there is a kind of a general theme and the general theme is that the camera performance should be dramatically improved since pre the update. Obviously, Samsung aren't going to come out with a statement saying something like we weren't kind of satisfied with the quality or it seems like the users weren't satisfied with the quality of the S24 Ultra series cameras. So it's kind of good that they are generally seemingly improving the performance of their cameras across the board. And I do overall agree with that. A lot of the photos that I was getting yesterday were looking really good when it comes to colors. There's definitely still a concern when it comes to night mode shots. You can kind of see from those comparisons that I did with the iPhone 15 Pro, the color blotching is still significant on the Samsung series where it is definitely better on the iPhone series when it comes to exposing the night sky but overall it's definitely good to see Samsung improving and kind of also just responding to consumers feedback. There is one more option here and this is that the sharpness option has been added to your screen mode in the display settings so you can enjoy more vivid colors. So this one is a little hidden I think this is a direct response to some complaints about the uh, display on the S24 Ultra being duller in comparison to other generations. So you can head into settings uh, you're going to go to display Scroll down and you go to get the screen mode setting. So first of all, you have the vivid natural uh, display settings. But if you select vivid, you can go to advanced settings and then you get a vividness slider. From what I can tell, this is the only place to change this setting, but it's slightly weird in the patch notes they were talking about sharpness, but you can improve the vividness of the display through this slider and it does seemingly improve the kind of color representation and it might affect the sharpness and the softness when viewing your images. And so guys, that's kind of that. It'd be interesting to know your thoughts on these patches if you have received them. Uh, definitely drop those down below in the comments and I'll catch you guys next time.